Welcome back to another review. I've got the Phoenix FD45 in for testing. This was sent in via Fast Tech. I thought this just looked interesting. It's something a bit different with torches and this particular one has a rotary focusing mechanism so you can zoom in that's powered by four AA batteries as well so don't look at too many AA torches so I thought I'd uh, have a look at this not much information on the side just some pictures but on the back we get the full specs and details so you get your five year warranty with this we have the power outputs five power levels as well as two strobe modes and notice the candela ratings as well vary depending on the zoom that you have we also have at the bottom nice to see is an output graph here so it shows you the run times and the drop down times as well based on their methodology so we're going to do a run time test later on but let's look at the body it's um, obviously a bit larger than your normal 18650 torches i put the dimensions on the screen and obviously a bit more weight as well with the AA batteries but the build quality on this is excellent very impressed nice bit of uh, knurling and flat edges around as well plus you have that loop there at the bottom for the wrist strap this is the ring where you adjust the zoom mechanism so onto the right there you can see it's a floodlight and then over to the left then it turns onto the spot and it's quite well greased up as well now it is stiff-ish um, it did seem to loosen up a little bit Notice we have the switch there. Now onto the LED, this using an XBL high and a neutral white. But as we'll see later on, this is quite a warm tint on this torch. And I'll just move the mechanism so you can see it. It's a bit different from the other zoom ones that I've looked at. You have that TIR optical lens in the middle. So I'm hoping this will make a big difference to the beam output, which isn't normally that impressive on the zoom torches. So you can use this one-handed thanks to the flat edges on the torch give a bit of grip. But sometimes with gloves, maybe you'd need to use two hands. So perhaps could have made it a bit coarser. The ring with the um, mouldings on that would have been a bit easier. Very good base stand on this because you have the dovetail. And here's the contact points. It's a single pin, not the two. I've looked at a couple before with two. It can be a bit fiddly to put in just a single pin on this. And you can see easily the markings for the contacts, so positive and negative. So it's a two up, two down configuration with this. All the threads on this are square cut as well. So very nicely machined and lubed up. Also the contact points in there. You can see the positive and negative again imprinted on that. So I'm just going to put some any loops in for testing. You can get slightly higher capacity cells than this. So their run times are based off of 2,500 milliamp hours cells. But these are spring loaded as well. Once you screw the cap on, there's no rattling around or anything like that. They're held in place firmly and it's not too stiff putting it on. So they've done a nice job with the overall design on this. What I'll do now is go through the user interface. So if you just lightly press, nothing happens. You have to push and hold for about a second. Then single press through the five power levels and you have a mode memory for the power levels, not the strobe mode. So pretty simple UI on this. And then we go over to the strobe. Anytime, whether it's on or off, if you push and hold, it takes you into the strobe mode and then press again to get from the normal strobe to the SOS. So on or off, you can use that, which is a good sign. Now, if there was one area to look at now is the lockout so quick double press on that and you'll see the light flashes to tell you it's in lockout mode so if you push it again or touch it again it will flash to tell you it's in lockout and that includes a long press as well so you need to double press to get out of the lockout mode only thing that i change with that is no access to the lowest or the highest mode that's the only complaint that i have but the ui is quite simple and easy to get used to so fit and feel in the hand is very good. I have to say I'm impressed. It is a premium torch, so I would expect something to be very robustly built and compare it to the Olight Warrior. Obviously with four AAs, it's gonna have a lot more girth than a slimmer torch. Some people like that. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's gonna weigh a bit more as well. This is the wrist strap that's included. They've uh, strengthened the loop on the end, bit thicker than normal, and you have your spare O-ring included as well. Now onto the holster, they decided to go for a low profile holster. Um, it's okay, I don't have a major problem with it. You have the loop on the back and there's another smaller loop as well. Would have changed maybe a couple of things. Some people like the Velcro double one where you have a Sony one and a Velcro one over the top for a quick um, putting on your belt very quickly. Um, what I would have changed is the side panels would have just made them a bit thicker because this is a heavier torch. So it's gonna need a bit more support but it's passable for a holster. Some people don't even use these holsters. It's just one area that I would potentially improve. What is one good thing about it though, is if you do zoom in, 
so that the barrel is extended a little bit there's still enough space with the velcro so that you can close it not bad i think they could have done slightly better in that area and this is your warranty card and just a leaflet showing you some other models from phoenix they do a few in the fd range i haven't used any others this is the first phoenix that i've used so i've got all of the details from the manual on screen for you so you can pause that and have a look through this just covers just the general information I've gone through with the operation as well and notice you can't use the lithium cells for this so it's just the 1.5 volt batteries and there's your maintenance and your warranty information waterproof test no problems seen at all this was underwater for half an hour no issues and I'm just going to show you quickly the beam pattern inside you'll notice it is quite a warm tint on this I like it myself but I'm going to zoom out so you see there's a transformation stage where it actually goes through to a sort of wider beam and I'll compare it to the tip CRI this is a neutral white as well a high CRI but you can see there's a big difference in the tint the Phoenix is a lot warmer um, I think it's nice I think it's pleasant to the eye you get used to it after a while and here's some of my beam shots got to do a few more with this because of the zoom action on the torch so I'm going through with the spot mode at the minute haven't done the lowest because you won't be able to see that but I've gone through the medium up to the turbo so although 900 lumens doesn't look a lot um, personally think it's probably going to be enough for a lot of people you can see me shining it there at spot over to the cars and it reaches them no problems at all so you've got quite a good range on this and what I'm doing now is going from the spot over to the wide so you get that flood effect once you reach a certain point and of course you can leave it halfway or wherever you want to in there so you can get a bit of range and a bit of floodlight with this and I'm going to go from at the turbo from the wide back into the spot so you can set it so that you have a bit of range and a bit of flood the biggest difference with this compared to some of the cheaper zoom torches I've looked at is this actually works you usually get a big power drop in the uh, spot mode and then you get a square pattern come up or some weird artifacts and you get very little spill outside of that with this you actually do get quite a decent bit of spill outside of the main central beam area so that's a big improvement over the normal torches that i've looked at the zoom ones which tend to be pretty much ignored by sort of torch enthusiasts so i'm going to do some more beam shots and then we'll come back with some thoughts at the end <laughs>
using the FD45 for a while now and I really like this torch in a lot of ways it's mostly good news the zoom mechanism is the first torch that I've used which doesn't have any of the huge compromises that you normally get you tend to lose a ton of power with the budget zoom torches at the top end and this doesn't have that problem you can get a very nice tight beam pattern and get good range out of it or dial it back and get a nice floodlight so I think it's a very practical and useful torch now not everyone is going to go for the AAs but they are easy to get hold of and some people don't want to use a lithium torch there are some compromises with that would be nice if they maybe come out with a lithium equivalent of this with the neutral white LED because I think the LED is very nice on this torch I really do like the color of the tint and um, the power spacing is excellent as well good build quality there's just a couple of points for me instant access to turbo or eco would have been nice to have had that in a user interface the zoom mechanism could be a bit easier to turn they perhaps could have made the collar with a coarser grip on that and i would beef up the holster as well this is a heavier torch not everyone uses a holster but it would have been nice if had something a bit more substantial in that department but very nice torch overall 900 lumens doesn't sound like a lot of power but for most most people it is more than enough for day-to-day -day use plus the fact that you can adjust the beam if you need further range and you can get pretty good range out of this even at the medium power settings so thanks for watching the video do let me know what you think of this particular model whether it's something that would interest you and I'll catch up with you in the next one